Good evening, Anke. Uh, thank you for being here with us at MUDAM and uh, thank you for having accepted the invitation to participate in the public program for the Me Family platform. Um, we are lucky to have you and discuss with you tonight um, the exhibition The Family of Man at Watchtation. Um, you are the curator of the exhibition um, at Siena and also in, the exhibition is in the Chateau um, at Clairvaux. And um, first of all, uh, could you describe the exhibition and uh, put it in a context? Well, thank you, Caroline, for the introduction and also thank you for the invitation. Uh, yes, so the family of man, to present it shortly in some numbers. So uh, the family of man has been shown for the first time at the Museum of Modern Art in 1955. And it, uh, it is composed of 503 pictures coming from 273 photographers from 68 countries. After 1955, it traveled around the world during 10 years and was seen by 10 million visitors. And probably it is the most discussed um, exhibition of the history of photography. And uh, there are some reasons for it. Uh, first, um, it's ambitious scope uh, and the uh, yet it's, it's very ambitious project and um, also it's a big collective effort um, with a strong curatorial project behind and a rather unusual and extraordinary extraordinary scenography for that time for the context, you could say that um, the Family of Man was the uh, anniversary exhibition for the Museum of Modern Art um, for the 25th anniversary. And the MoMA was a museum that collected very early on, so from its creation in 1930, uh, photography as an art, which is quite exceptional also. And uh, Edward Steichen joined the Museum of Modern Art in uh, 1947. He worked with the museum already before. And um, I like to see the, the family of man as a condensation of his private and professional experiences because uh, Steichen, he was trained as a lithographer in his early years, also trained as a painter. Uh, he was a curator, he was a film director, um, and also in photography, he had many careers. Uh, there is a monography about him edited by uh, Todd Brando and Bill Ewing, um, who, which is entitled Lives in Photography. And this describes, um, or the title says very well, <laughs> already that it's not only one career in photography because there he um, he started with pictorialism to defend photography as an art form and uh, he made also fashion photography um, he made straight photography uh, he also photographed or was documenting during the two world wars which had a very strong impact on him and also on his artistic and, and personal career and um, Steichen also saw the family of man as um, as the artwork of his life, so his major oeuvre. And uh, so at that time when he was at MoMA, he um, was not anymore interested in, um, in defending photography as an art form because he thought that uh, this combat was done. Um, but he wanted to explore photography um, and its power of communication. And so he explores this in the exhibition, The Family of Man. And um, so what he is exploring further uh, with the exhibition and also with the special scenography he puts it in is how to convey a message and how to transport it further. What makes the exhibition, I mean, you already pointed out some things. What makes it so special? Why is it one of the most important exhibitions, if not the most discussed one um, in the history of photography? Um, yeah, w what is special about it? Mm -hmm. I will start with the ambitious project uh, so that I mentioned earlier. So in 1951, uh, Edward Steichen uh, starts collecting photographs. So he travels to Europe to meet photographers. He has his uh, friend and colleague, Dorothea Lang, uh, organizing a meeting with uh, almost 40 photographers in Chicago. 
He has uh, his assistant and a friend photographer, Wayne Miller, who um, has a look at uh, all the Life magazine archive and also at the Magnum archive. Um, additionally, they put ads in magazines to collect photographs. And at the end of this process, uh, they collect, so it's a mythical number, we don't know exactly how many, but between four and seven million photographs. Um, so to make their selection of the 503 that compose finally the, the exhibition. And the basic line uh, and the basic idea is, uh, I would say, not as the criticism of the exhibition often says that we are all alike, but that within our differences, we have more things to share than that, than that separate us. Um, and he uses photography uh, as the illustration of his concept. And this single photographer like this is put behind the bigger idea. So he uses photographs uh, from different contexts, from mainly photojournalists, to, uh, to fit into his idea and to compose a new story, to compose a new visual narration. Um, and he acts in that sense less like a curator or like we understand the uh, work of a curator today, but more like an editor or uh, also like a film di director. And um, the exhibition is also often described as an oversized life magazine where you're wandering through. Um, and you could also say that Steichen uses the the technique of cinematographic montage to um, compose the bigger picture that in the end makes the exhibition. And um, here I would like to quote David Campany also from his book on photographs and he says uh, on photographs they cannot carry meanings in any straightforward way. A single photograph is unable to account for the appearance it, it describes or even account for itself. And a little bit later, he says, meaning is made as much between images as within them. And this is exactly what happens with the family of man. And um, we could also uh, compare this montage and the meaning um, uh, that comes from the... Um, start again. We could also compare this kind of montage and uh, the meaning that um, comes from, um, from the picture but also from the dialogue of the pictures with the visitor uh, to uh, Clément Cogitore's work uh, that he has in Me Family, The Evil Eye, where he is composing um, uh, a new film of uh, pictures or of um, scenes that he gets from Getty Images. Um, what is also very special about the, um, the exhibition, The Family of Man, is the scenography. Um, Edward Seiken had been working already with the photographer and Bauhaus architect Herbert Bayer for two exhibitions at MoMA and they were exploring um, yes, uh, a visual theory uh, of Herbert Bayer. So he um, created a visual diagram uh, that, um, where he says a visitor is uh, able to grasp more of the pictures in an exhibition than just on a horizontal line at uh, 160 centimeters. So uh, they put the pictures on the bottom, they put it on, uh, yes, on, on the floor and also on the ceiling. Uh, they took it from the wall and put it into the middle of, um, of the exhibition space. And this is exactly also what um, Edward Steichen applies with uh, his architect Paul Rudolph. Uh, also coming from the Bauhaus for the family of men. And uh, the effect this, um, yes, this mise-en-scene has on the visitor is a very strong impact. So because you participate physically in another way in the exhibition and also emotionally, um, you actively take part in the exhibition. I think uh, what is important for the family of men and to understand it uh, in its entirety is really to see it physically, uh, to experience it, um, yes, in the exhibition room and to, uh, to see what effect it makes on you. Beautiful. Um, 
One last question for me. What happened after, with the exhibition um, after it was exhibited in New York in 55, after it was at MoMA? Mm -hmm. So there were several things uh, going on and I would like to start with the, um, yes, with the uh, traveling exhibitions after MoMA uh, and after they saw that it was such a huge success at MoMA, uh, they decided together with, um, uh, with the USIA, the US Information Agency, to let it travel. So they produced 10 copies um, of the exhibition and sent the sets all over the world all over the world during 10 years uh, in, uh, and it went in over 150 museums and was seen by over 10 million visitors, uh, so impressive <laughs> numbers. And uh, at the end of this world tour it came to Luxembourg and um, stayed here as a gift from the American government uh, on the wish of Steichen. Uh, in 1989, uh, it was the CNA, so the Centre National de l'Audiovisuel, which was created um, by the Ministry of Culture, and it was the big first uh, job of this uh, cultural institute to uh, restore the original panels and to uh, re-exhibit them uh, in, in their historical form uh, in the castle. Uh, so it's uh, now installed at Castle Clairvaux, it's in the north of Luxembourg. And uh, we are exhibiting there the family of man as an oeuvre. So um, it's an exhibition of, an historical exhibition of course, with, uh, with our interpretation today and uh, it is accompanied by um, a mediation program and also by a research program of course but we um, for us it's important to uh, respect it as a whole and as a work of art so we don't intervene into the structure of this work um, and over the years it also got the recognition from the unesco it's now uh, integrated in the register of the memory of the world and uh, what happened also during the world tour and uh, after it was a whole, um, yes, or let's say what happened during the world tour and after the world tour uh, was also that these many receptions from all over the world and many reactions uh, got collected and formed today the reception history that is still going on of the family of man. <clears throat> And during, um, during its world tour, the uh, slogan that traveled with the exhibition was, uh, it's the show that you see with your heart. And I would say that this divide between the heart and the intellect um, <laughs> is something that stayed in its reception. Because by the general public, it was um, a very enthusiast reaction to the exhibition. And you could say that it hit really the nerve of the time during the Cold War and during the 50s and 60s when it traveled. And uh, people felt connected to it and liked this idea of sharing uh, and of brotherhood and uh, yes, accepted the idea. Um, and on the other hand, there were the intellectuals uh, like, um, yes, or art critics also, like for example Roland Barthes, who wrote a very influential uh, critique about the exhibition and others followed him in that, um, that uh, pointed to the romanticism and naive worldview and also to the ethnoc ethnocentricity of the exhibition. And uh, today I would say that there is um, a real reassessment uh, of the exhibition, uh, of the exhibition in its context and also of uh, the criticism of the exhibition uh, in its context, in its historical context. And um, this reassessment um, allows to take a closer look at the visual strategies of the family of man to see that it is a real complex visual narration and um, in a sort of deductive statement made with photographs that is quite courageous for the time of its creation and that can be seen also as a declaration of human rights and as um, with its scenography it can also be seen as a democratic participatory statement. 
Um, something else, and there I, uh, I would like to connect it to the project uh, of Me Family, to the exhibition. Uh, so there was also a real uh, curatorial reception. Um, so there were a, a whole range of exhibitions that followed the Family of Man after its world tour and also already during its world tour. Um, for example, there were projects that took up the, um, the concept quite literally, uh, for example, the family of children or the family of women. Um, other projects tried to shift a little bit the view or the frame um, how to look at the world. Uh, there were projects in Germany called Weltausstellung der Fotografie or, for example, um, to present a communist view of the world uh, entitled Vom Glück des Menschen. And from the 80s on, this view on the world um, changed a little bit. The family of man was not um, responded to literally as a statement, but it was more taken like a starting point to create some, um, something else and to create a new visual argument that was not linear and uh, that became plural and more complex. And um, I like the, the interview also of uh, Francesco Bonami um, that is also on the platform when he said, so we had to create a cacophony in the exhibition that responds to the modern world. And something um, that these projects all have in common, I would say, is that they are becoming more self-reflexive and uh, they try to um, Yes, they ask more questions than they give answers um, necessarily. Um, but something that connects them is always to see, yes, how can we grasp the world? How can we, maybe not pin down, but how can we respond to something like environmental issues, like identity, landscape, human beings? And um, these exhibitions respond to a changing world and are a continuing assessment of our relationship to the world, but also an assessment of how art corresponds to the world. And it's also uh, a negotiation, I think, to define what is the self and what is the other. And this is constantly shifting today. And what I see also in these projects is the necessity of, of art to interpret and question what surrounds us and similarly also um, the necessity and also the responsibility of, uh, of a contemporary art museum to, uh, to respond to this and to discuss these issues with its communities. So um, yes, I would like to finish and uh, congratulate <laughs> for the exhibition uh, and also for the digital platform, which I think is really something that corresponds to the world today. Mm. Well, we thank you for your contribution, um, for sharing your knowledge on the family of man and um, congratulate you on being the curator of such a great show and giving us the opportunity to follow up and um, still be curious about the world. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.